Howdy. To kick off the 25th anniversary subline, we have Universe Hound, who comes with Ravage. They were probably paired to reference the third episode of the G1 series, where Hound is briefly seen guarding Ravage. It's a tenuous connection, really, but what are you going to do? Hound, as usual, is a Jeep. I don't know if it's based on an actual model or not. I will say this though, in this form, especially regarding the proportions, he looks like he belongs in the animated line. The brush guard is at an angle, the wheels are bulky even for a Jeep, and the windshield is smaller than it should be. Ignoring all that, it's a decent mode. There's some nice modelling on him, such as this interior here, which is like that of an alternator. The colour scheme certainly makes him recognisable as Hound, though the Henke version gives him a more military, and thus cartoon accurate, style paint job. For features, the Jeep rolls along well on its wheels. Also, these tabs at the back flip up allowing you to place Ravage on top, in his cassette form. And let's not forget the hologram projector, which fits through the back of here. Like so. Now for Ravage himself. As a cassette, he can fit inside G1 Soundwave. At least, I hear he does. Sadly, I don't have Soundwave to prove it. But apart from the dimensions and two holes, he doesn't really resemble a cassette that much. Not without labels, at least. Still, it's a good attempt. Plus, I don't think kids these days will knock cassettes are anyway, so... Hound's transformation is fairly simple, but has some clever bits to it. Mainly, how the thighs are formed from the seats. How you position the front wheels is up to you, but I fix them like this, which looks, and is, more solid. Ravage's transformation is also pretty ingenious, in how it makes him three-dimensional. Hound's robot mode is definitely the better of the two modes. The proportions are almost perfect, with the only oddity being the ridiculously large feet. Of course, the usual upside to this is that they give him great stability. Articulation in general is great. Another reason to position the wheels like this, so they don't get in the way of shoulder movement. Incidentally, the toes move in a manner similar to Alternator's Jazz and Shock Blast. He pretty much has the same colours and details as before. Also, the head sculpt is very well done, 
if a bit small in size. The hologram projector is supposed to attach to his shoulder, preferably the right one since that's how he looked in the show. Unfortunately it fits poorly and at an angle unless you try the superglue trick shown in my 75th video. However, he can also hold it as a weapon and it fits in his hand very securely, so no worries there. Going back to Ravage, his panther mode, as I said earlier, is no longer flat. Though he's proportionate for such a creature, his face, though moulded into a snarling expression, looks more like a beak. He isn't as articulate as he looks. Due to the way he transforms, his forelegs can't move forward or back at the shoulders. His rear legs have good posability though. He can also move at his neck and tail. He has paint detailing on his eyes and legs, as well as the Decepticon symbol on his back. And that's pretty much it. Overall, aside from a few quibbles, this set is a great way to start the new universe subline. Buy it. Next I'm reviewing Universe Cyclonus with Nightstick. Until then, till all are one.